Good morning, Steve here. Um, yeah, I know the screen is blank. Okay, uh, that's because uh, my explorations this week led me into an area where my curiosity was exceeded by my ignorance. So I asked Bobby Gage to join me again today. Then he had a family emergency, so he can't be here. But thankfully, he has pre-recorded his contribution for us, so we're not going to miss out. So, okay, for the last few weeks, we've been talking about sin, um, about the trauma that we face in life, about adverse childhood experiences and the damage that they do to us biologically and genetically, damage that affects our health, damage that affects our behavior, damage that can be passed on to our children. But being spiritual, being religious, means that we're seeking to be more than what we are biologically or genetically. So this week I want to shift gears and uh, start exploring some answers to that. Okay. Um, so without further ado, uh, let me bring Bobby, Bobby online here and uh, let's see what he has to say. Hey, Steve. Hey. Yeah, it's Bobby here. I'm out droning today. Beautiful, beautiful Sabbath day to enjoy God's beauty. It's, it's just a beautiful day out. It's, it is time to enjoy some droning. What? You don't know what droning is? Droning? Well, this is it. Look at those shots. Isn't that beautiful? I can slow it way down. I can hover it. It's a little aircraft. Um, it's a hobby. Yeah, it can get expensive. But um, basically, I'm down here in a little spec. And I am bringing my drone down here so you can see it. As we get closer, I concentrate. So I can't talk that much right now. And in a second, I'll get it down here. There I am. That's me. There we are. So, this is what droning is. I got a tablet with me. I'll, I'll use, use your cell phone too. I have my controller. And... I have that, the, the drone. drone. And what's cool with the drone is, as it's recording me, I am controlling it. And I can tell it what to do. I can tell it to go up, down, spin around, go forward, go backwards, and so on and so forth. And you notice when it stops and takes that picture, it is very still. And it does that by using GPS technology. Now there's a lot of other things that go on in there too. But basically for the most part, the main thing is that GPS technology um, it is consistently, consistently receiving data and information from satellites all above. There's a lot of satellites going on right now. Um, I'll even take a screenshot on my phone. I have an app on my phone. Uh, if you're interested in, uh, uh, you or any of your friends are interested in the app, go to the App Store. Now, this is the Android app. I'm sorry. This is the only Android app that uses this app. But it's called GPS Test Plus. Okay? And when you bring it up, it will have all these satellites. And I'll show a picture up on the screen. have all these different satellites up on the screen. And it shows the globe, which way the north is, and stuff along that line. And when it has that, it's amazing how many satellites are actually up in that sky that we can't even see. But that drone is using to know position. So let me show you how that works real quick. So I'm going to fly it here. If you notice, wow, that was close. And as it comes back, do I trust it? Do I trust it? Out 
it gets a little scary because when you're at this angle, it looks like it's coming right at you. And well, it is. But it just misses me because it's following the GTS signals. And we have to trust it. That is going to follow those GPS signals. And oftentimes we do. We, we trust those GPS signals on our phones all the time, on maps, taking us to the right place. And, and so on and so, so forth. forth. Right, right now, now I'm trusting it. it. That, that drone's, drone's not going to come hit me in the face. face. So it's going to hover there correctly like it's supposed to. I'm going to show you a little bit more here. So, whoa, there, there we go. go. So, so here's the drone, drone right here. here. I'm, I'm not going to touch the controls. controls. Watch, Watch what, what happens, happens when I push it. it. Watch this. If you notice, it comes right back where it was before. Why does it do that? Because the GPS signal knows it's right there. And that is how it works. It when it pushes, pushes this way, way it, it will, will push, push back. back. Now, now, if the wind gets really strong, strong it'll push it way out of sync. Sure, this, this drone is a small one. one. Bigger ones, ones are a lot more powerful, and they can compensate a lot quicker and with more strength behind them. This one is just a small, simple one for some simple photography that I enjoy doing. Put that all together, you got very interesting abilities with the drone. So, so we, we can take this up, down, down left and right, and everywhere, but, but it, it knows, knows where it is by this, this. and hold steady because of the GPS signal that's sending out to that drone to keep it level and hovering correctly and not hitting me. That's very, very, very important. All right. right, back to you, Steve. Pretty impressive. So Bobby had uh, work that brought him into town today, or this week. He and I met at a park, socially distancing, wearing our masks. And uh, he was sharing his passion with me uh, in the droning department. I wasn't quite as ignorant as he makes me out to be, but when he showed me that app, I was amazed at how many GPS satellites were being used to orient that drone. Okay, I thought maybe one, or, you know, three, four. But no, there's a multitude of, of, of them up there. And uh, what Bobby told me is that they're not all from one system. Some of, some of them are put up there by the United States government. Some by the Russian government some by the European Union, the Chinese, the Indians and the Japanese are getting on board too. It just, it's amazing to me. And all of those satellites are open, open access and our GPS receivers connected to them. Do you trust your GPS? Now, when I use, use uh, Google Maps or uh, the navigational uh, tool in my car, I do it with a, you know, a, a degree of skepticism. You know, I, I can't quite trust where it's telling me to go. In fact, you're going to laugh at this. Uh, Vivian insists that we keep an old-fashioned atlas in our car because uh, her level of trust of GPS is even lower than mine. And yet, um, my cell phone, when it doesn't work as expected, I, I'm pretty disappointed. You know, I'm disappointed in the cell phone carrier. Uh, why doesn't my iPhone work as advertised? And yet, what Bobby told me this week is our cell phones are completely dependent on GPS signals for their basic function. Basic function, not just location services, basic function. Bobby put a miniature cell phone tower into one of the area hospitals to improve cell reception there. And something he learned from that experience is that Every cell phone tower has a GPS receiver in it. He had to actually drill up through the ceiling to get a sensor up there so that the, the, receiver, the, the cell phone 
tra uh, transmitter that he was putting into that hospital could function. Now, why would a cell phone tower need access to a GPS signal? Well, it turns out that it hasn't, doesn't have to do with location. The GPS signals are also the timepiece of the world. I remember back when I was a boy, there used to be these radio transmissions that came onto every station several times a day. At the sound of the beep, the time according to the atomic clock in Washington, D.C. will be 1229. You don't hear that anymore. No. Why? Because the atomic clock radio transmissions have been replaced by GPS signals. GPS signals provide us with our local time, whether it be on our cell phones or on cell phone towers or at the bank. Okay. Um, they keep the world in sync. And our entire cell phone network globally is dependent on that time-specific synchronization of radio signals in order to function. Without it, we would be dropping calls left and right. So, what GPS signal are you orienting your life to? Who's sending it out? Before Jesus left, the Bible says that he told his disciples, when I leave, I'm going to send a comforter to you, the Holy Spirit. And that Holy Spirit is going to help you to understand what sin is, what righteousness is, and what judgment means. Now, those are three trigger words for many of us. Whether we're spiritual, spiritual and religious, Christian, non-Christian, they're trigger words for us. Accuse a Christian of sin, and they will get as defensive as a non-Christian. We don't like to talk about sin. Jesus said the Holy Spirit helps us to understand what sin is. And righteousness. Many of us, myself included, think of ourselves as righteous. And we like to define what it means for us to be righteous. We don't like to be measured against an external standard of righteousness. And judgment? Who likes judgment? Don't judge me. And yet those are part of the orientation system that Jesus said the Holy Spirit provides. So as we start exploring this project, I want you to think about those questions. What GPS system are you using to navigate through life? How are you orienting your life? And maybe more importantly, who's sending out the signals you are listening to to define sin, righteousness, and to understand judgment in your life? Be safe, my friends. Be prudent. But above all, look up. I'll see you next week. Oh, and thank you, Carol and DA, for letting me know that on the first live streaming, that my audio was out. Takes friends. <laughs>